Assad. I mean, do you get threatened by the Taliban, by sort of more, you know, extremist groups in Afghanistan because of, you know, the, I mean, that they they would object to the very existence mm. of a media group like yours in their country, in uh, Afghanistan? Do you do you find pressure from them? Threats yeah, well, of I mean, violence and so Threats forth? from the Taliban, from the Haqqani network. Uh, we're not particularly liked in Iran. We, threat, we have been threatened by the regime there. And, uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, this is, you know, we've, what we signed up for. I mean, we went into these really volatile countries because there were no barriers to entry. We saw significant potential in terms of the, you know, typically in these markets, which are growing at sort of 10, 15 percent, the advertising market's growing three times the GDP growth. Right. So there's enormous potential. And the, the whole f formula for us is to get in, you know, have enough diversity that even if one of these countries goes, you know, belly up, that we could still prosper as a business. So for us, I mean, we, we, we accept these risks. Uh, they exist. We do, we do take them seriously. But, you know, I mean, for us, we're, we're offering the counter-narrative to the Taliban, what the Taliban are offering. Saad, let me ask you something about social media. Mm. The, we've seen in a lot of uh, developing countries mm. in our region, Indonesia being the prime mm. example, Social media, um, Twitter is mm. in particular, and Facebook too, but Twitter in particular in Indonesia has been mm. very, very big. Uh, what, what is, is there social media uptake in the markets you're operating in, and, and how significant is it? They're very significant. I mean, one, one of the things is that we have a 60% market share in Afghanistan. Uh, uh, market share of uh, what? Television, and of media, television, yeah. radio, and so forth. Right. And we always felt very comfortable saying that people are not going to say bad things about us because, you know, we're... We, we dominate the media, but you know, but we we've noticed that you know when people say bad things about us on Facebook, you know everyone gets to read it. Mm. So we've gone from zero uh, in terms of people, you know, people's access to Facebook to to, to a million in less than two, in less than two years, I believe. Mm. But internet access has gone from zero to about six million in Afghanistan in in, in two years, mostly because of uh, of 3G. Most mm. people now access the internet and Facebook and Twitter using a mobile device. So the world is changing and, and you know, we're noticing that we have to be also, you know, we have a very, very proactive social media uh, uh, department, let's call it, or team or unit that, um, that also attempts to engage uh, our viewers and listeners through mm. social media. Very, very effective. And do you, do you think that is that, that growth of social media is contributing to or having any impact, any positive impact on the whole democratization process in, in Afghanistan and the other markets in which you operate? Well, as, you know, as a victim of social media, you know, we've all been victims over the years. I don't know, the jury's still out because I think that it's very difficult to filter what's good and bad. Um, sure. And especially when people are so conspiratorial in our neck of the woods, it can have a neg negative impact. But I think longer term, it's all, I mean, whenever you have people being able to communicate, it's a good thing. Mm. But media overall, whether it's social media or digital media or television or radio, I mean, it has, to a large extent, facilitated social change in our neck of the woods. Mm. Now, you, you, um, you, you've been described mm. as the Rupert Murdoch of uh, Afghanistan. Uh, Which is comical. But uh, yeah, is it, yeah. Yeah, well, you, you have, he, Fox has a, uh, a shareholding in your company, but uh, a minority shareholding. Yes. But, um, but with all of that, with your keen interest in politics, I mean, could you follow the footsteps, not in any... Um, a licentious manner, of course, but could you follow the footsteps of Berlusconi, who started off with a very large yeah. share of the Italian uh, media market and then moved into politics? Why not politics, uh, uh, Yeah. Um, I don't know how to answer that question, but uh, may maybe he's not the best example. No, I think, <laughs> I think we can play a really important role as, a, as, as, a, as, a, you know, as media operators in the region. I think that we, we've, you know, there are a lot of barriers. Um, right across the region. I think media can play a very significant role in terms of um, whether you're facilitating social change or making people aware of things and give, giving people a mm. voice. You know, we have a real battle. I think that the radicalization of the region, I mean, although I think it's going to reverse at some stage, but it's a scary thing, not just for the region, but for the entire world. And mm. people like, have, like us have a responsibility uh, because the region was never this radical, you know. And ironically, it all started off in Afghanistan. Mm. During the Soviet occupation, the more radical Islamic elements were pushed uh, with Saudi money and Pakistani backing. And the entire region, you know, South Asia in particular, which was always into like Sufi Islam, very sort of mild and very, very sort of, 
spiritual Islam into this mm. radical Wahhabi hardcore, you know, um, ideology that is totally alien to us. But we're seeing that not just in Afghanistan and Pakistan, we're seeing this, this, this form of Islam, you know, become more dominant now in Syria, in, in Lebanon, mm. and North well, Africa. What is its appeal, though? Because it seems from a Western perspective so ascetic, so unyielding, so distinctly unattractive. Because, because I think that the people, the, the leaders are very, you know, they strongly believe in their, you know, their strong belief in their ideology, um, b basically compels them to take a more active role. If you're a spiritual Sufi type Muslim, I mean, you don't have a leadership. Mm. It's it's an inner thing. It's between you and God. Uh, it's a very personal matter. But for these people, it's 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 you know, the part of the ideology is the the, the religion becoming more. Uh, you know, more playing a more dominant role in the politics of a country. Mm. You know, there's a huge link between politics and religion. Uh, and a lot of these people, I mean, I think that there was no outlet for them. Mm. You know, most of these Islamic countries were dominated by tyrants and di dictators. So this became sort of the, 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 uh, the, uh, the, uh, the only other option for a lot of these young mm. activists at universities and schools.